And joining me now is another Jewish lawmaker who voted against the bill, Democratic Congresswoman Sarah Jacobs of California. She's a member of the House Democratic Steering and Policy Committee. Congresswoman Jacobs, it is nice to see you again. Thank you very much for coming to the Saturday show. So why did you vote against the bill? Yeah, look, as a, a Jewish person, I, like millions of Jews around the world, have experienced anti-Semitism myself. I've been called slurs. I can't tell you how many jokes have been made about my frizzy hair and my big nose. Uh, and it's very clear that anti-Semitism is on the rise, and that's a very significant threat. But at the same time, I think it's incredibly important that we recognize what actually is anti-Semitic. And I do not believe that anti-Zionism is inherently anti-Semitic. Uh, and I think it's important that we do things that will actually address the real rise of anti-Semitism and keep Jewish students safe. And that's not this bill that would actually end up sweeping in so many of the nonviolent protesters on campus uh, and would penalize and and uh, hurt free speech on campus and everywhere else. So, Congresswoman, I'm glad you brought up um, the, the difference between anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism. For the folks out there who are trying to understand what this is, what is, how, how would you explain the difference between anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism? Yeah, it's a very good question. So Zionism is the idea that the Jewish people should have a homeland. Uh, and it's premised on the ideology that nation states are based on peoples and nations having statehood. Um, and the idea that anti-Zionism is anti-Semitic is really premised on the idea that the Jewish people are the only people for whom this idea is questioned. Um, and I understand, I do understand people who feel that way, but you know, I work uh, in international conflict resolution all over the world, and I can tell you that it's simply not the case. You know, just in the Middle East, you have the Kurds. Um, in Europe, you have Basque country, you have Catalan. Uh, I'm the ranking member of the Africa subcommittee. There are many places in Africa, like Somaliland, uh, like the Igbo people, the Republic of Biafra in Nigeria, uh, who, you know, whether or not they should get a state is contested. And so, to me, the idea that it's only the Jewish people who are having this concept question for uh, is just not actually accurate uh, with what we see in the world. And that's why I don't believe it's inherently an anti-Semitic thing to question. Mm. You know, Congresswoman, as you well know, Republicans from both chambers say there's a clear solution to the campus demonstrations. Listen. Now here's what needs to happen. Number one is we need to stop funding these universities. If they don't want to do something to address this, well, then kiss your federal funding goodbye. So, Congresswoman, what does that signal to you about the Republicans' focus on anti-Semitism? Well, first of all, um, look, I think it's clear there is a real rise of anti-Semitism. There's a real rise of anti-Semitism on campus. And I've heard from many Jewish students who, who don't feel safe. Um, but I think it's also clear that these Republicans have been trying to cut funding for higher education and education in general for many, many years. And that this is just the latest uh, thing that they are trying to politicize to get their end goal. And frankly, politicizing this anti-Semitism uh, is not actually keeping Jewish students safe. In fact, I would argue it's making Jewish students less safe. There are very real things we should and can be doing to protect Jewish students on campus, such as fully funding and implementing the national strategy to counter anti-Semitism that the Biden administration has put out, such as fully funding the Office of Civil Rights at uh, the uh, at the Department of Education, so that if someone feels like their rights have been, uh, you know, impinged on campus, they have actual redress, and we have the ability to investigate that and remediate it. Um, but this bill won't actually do any of those things. All it will do is it will sweep in lots and lots of speech that should be protected, that is protected, I would argue, under the First Amendment, right. uh, into a, a definition that is not even agreed upon by the majority of mainstream Jews and Jewish organizations mm. across the country. Real quickly, Congresswoman, because we are out of time, but I do just want to get from you. The president is set to deliver a speech on anti-Semitism on Tuesday, which marks the Holocaust Day of Remembrance. What would you like to hear from him? 
Now, I know that President Biden uh, has been a strong champion for the Jewish community and for countering anti-Semitism. I hope he really leans into the national strategy to counter anti-Semitism that he put out. And I hope that he also talks about this space we need to carve out between anti-Semitism and very legitimate criticism of the policies of the government of Israel. Congresswoman Sarah Jacobs of California, thank you very much for coming to The Saturday Show.